Hi everyone, I'm Jody Elcock and I'm here today with Dr. Joseph Nemeth. He's a periodontist in Southfield. And I think we all know that uh, Dr. Nemeth is an amazing surgeon. Um, his uh, very highly credentialed clinician. He's a thought leader in the periodontic space. But today we want to talk about Dr. Nemeth, the man. Um, if at any point you guys want to jump ahead to a certain question that I'm asking, there will be timestamps down in the description. You can just choose what you want to hear about and, and jump to that space. So, are you ready? I'm as ready as I will ever be. Tell us a little bit about your family. <laughs> well, Where have you lived? Where did you grow up? Well, you know, I was born and raised in Detroit. Um, and. Uh, I went to Wayne State University for a while. I graduated from Cass Tech. I went to University of Michigan. Then I went into the Army. Um, I actually graduated from University of Michigan Dental School, went into the Army for a few years, came back, went back to specialty school at New York University, and then moved out to California actually for three years and practiced in Beverly Hills for three years. Worked on some very interesting people. <laughs> um, anyway, I won't mention any names, but... And then I decided I wanted to come back home to Michigan, which is where I was born and raised and my family was. And the lifestyle in California was a little not quite what I thought I wanted for raising my family. Uh, and uh, so I opened my practice here and I've been here ever since. Taught at University of Detroit for a while and uh, I worked at uh, uh, Sinai Hospital at that time. Actually, when I was in California, I taught at USC, and I've been very happy. I have four daughters who are scattered all over the world, well, the country anyway. One in California, one, in fact, she's a filmmaker and she's a screenwriter. And then I've got a one who's a yoga teacher, I've got another one who is a therapist, another one who's a stay-at-home mom, and. Got uh, grandchildren scattered, one in California, four in Texas, who I go to visit regularly. So it sounds like you've done a fair amount of traveling. What are some of your favorite cities to visit, or what is your very most favorite city to visit? Well, I lived in New York for four years. Well, I was stationed there in the service, because I was in the Army for three years, one year in Korea, uh, after the war, and two years in New York City, and then two more years in training in New York City. And I love New York City, but I wouldn't want to live there. It's like, uh, as they say, it's a great place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. Um, I lived in Los Angeles for four years. Um, I wouldn't want to live there. That's why I moved back here. So what's my favorite city? Detroit. Good answer. What about international cities? Uh, international cities, I would have to say, I love Barcelona, it's just great, great food, exciting environment. Uh, London is great because I can speak the language, which is a huge help. Um, I've been to Paris, very romantic, I love it, but again, it's my language, I, I, I don't speak French, so it depends really what you're looking for. Some of the Italian cities, Venice, uh, charming, you know, it depends. Do you want romance? Do you want vitality? Do you want excitement? Each city has its own offerings. Uh, but if I had to pick a favorite city, you know, probably I would have to say London only because I can speak the language. <laughs> That's a good enough reason, I think. <laughs> so anyone who knows you, knows that you are an incredibly healthy guy and oh the, yeah and i love i love i love health it works for me uh I, I think it was woody allen who's now in sort of disrepute once said when it comes to death i'm against it <laughs> and that's exactly the way you know i, I look we're all gonna go but i want to live as healthy uh as i can with uh, minimal uh, chronic diseases as long as I can. And so I try to eat a, and live a healthy lifestyle. And a lot of that has to do with diet. So I have, uh, I have four, I have three large cups of a blended salad, which is basically 
romaine lettuce, tomato, cucumber, uh, celery, all blended together every morning. And then I have a large portion of steamed vegetables, just steamed. It could be chard, it could be dandelion greens, it could be broccoli. Almost any greens are valuable and healthy. They're enormously effective in helping to prevent chronic diseases, really a particularly cancer. So I have that every morning. I have a glass of uh, celery juice every morning. And so my mornings are always done very well. Uh, I slip a little bit when it comes to the evening because I love to snack, but I try to eat as healthy as I can. And I take a ton of supplements, just a ton. Every morning I have a pack of, I don't even know how many, it's probably 30 to 50 pills, let's say 45 pills, different kinds of supplements that I think are helpful. So there you go. Love it. And I exercise regularly. I'm too lazy to do strength training, so I have to work with a personal trainer because they, you know, they keep me in line, sort of force me to do what I wouldn't do ordinarily, and then I, I do a lot of aerobics. Well, I used to uh, run, uh, exercise, bike, uh, elliptical, um, now mainly walking. Nice. So when you're not, when you're not thinking about eating healthy, what are some of your favorite cuisines? Like, where are your favorite restaurants? What do you like to splurge on? You know, there aren't a heck of a lot of good restaurants in Michigan. There are some. Uh, <coughs> there's a place called San Morello downtown, and that's in the, named after my watch, it's in the Shinola building, as a matter of fact. I like that. A place called Ocean Prime. It's a steakhouse. It's a very, it's upscale. I like it very much. Sharaku is... I think has the best sushi in 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 the in in probably the quad state area. It's amazing, and they have delicious sushi. And I love sushi, so I go there. Not expensive, very low key, great stuff. What's your go-to sushi order? Believe it or not, they have fresh raw sardine. It sounds horrible, but I like it. Uh, other than that. Um, I like uh, raw tuna, um, um, uh, yellowtail, standard kinds of things. Um, I don't know if there's one, but I think if I had to do one sushi order, it probably would be a spicy tuna roll. It's predictable, it's reliable, it's delicious, it's got a bite to it, and it's healthy. Are you adventurous with food? Do you tr like to I try I happen to be things? very adventurous with food. Um, not everyone in my life is that way, unfortunately. So it becomes a, re a problem when it comes to certain restaurants. But I'll try almost anything. Um, it's, just, it's just fun and you discover all kinds of interesting foods. Unfortunately, not everybody's that way. You know, they, they like the tried and true kinds of things. And that's fine if it's done well. But I'm very, I'm very, I'm a very tough food critic. I'm very discriminating. I really want delicious food, and I don't really particularly care, you know, what wh what culture it comes from. But I'm adventurous. But I do want it to be good. So let's switch gears just a little bit. Okay. I have noticed that you wear incredibly colorful and interesting socks. I love socks, and I have all different kinds. I think this is this is one I have on today. This is University of Michigan, I think. Yes. Which is where I graduated from, and I have a whole ton. I mean, I brought some with me here. Uh, let's see what some of these are. There's Mickey. I probably have Minnie in here somewhere also. What got you started on the sock obsession? Uh, what got me started on the socks was, it was boring. Black socks were boring. And this was before colorful socks came into being, you know, use. There were very few people wearing, you know, colored socks or themed socks. And I just, it's fun. Let's lighten things up a little bit. And 
I thought patients would enjoy it and it's just it's just a kind of a fun thing it lightens the mood just seeing the socks makes people smile so let's lighten the mood let's make people as happy and as we possibly can if socks help let's do it if you had to guess how many pairs do you have oh it's how many pairs have I given away <laughs> I've probably given away 50 to 100 pairs of great socks because I just don't have the room. <laughs> Unfortunately, if I had the room, I'd have those socks. So presently, I probably have 40, 35 or 40 pairs of socks with different colors and themes and that sort of thing. But I've given away more than I have. I've been forced to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I had two pack socks with the, re the, the headband and everything. <laughs> I don't know if I still have them around, but I think I'd have to say those were my favorite and a lot of people's favorite for a long time. Um, what about books? Printed or audio? And uh, do fiction, nonfiction? You know, primarily nonfiction. Primarily nonfiction. Um, and when I read, I really, I, I like reading, I like holding the book, I like the paper. Unfortunately, it's, it's much more convenient doing it on my iPad or my computer. So mainly I'm doing Kindle and have the books on Kindle. Uh, I read a lot of books on philosophy. I think Zen is very interesting. Uh, I try doing meditation every day. I find it extremely valuable. Uh, I've just gotten back into it. Uh, I'm interested in philosophy. Uh, I'm interested in health, of course, if, as we talked about. I'd like to know more about finance and investments. So it's primarily, primarily nonfiction, you know, and uh, once in a while it's fiction, but primarily nonfiction, things that I can learn from and put into my life. Do you have any favorite, do you watch sports? Do you have any favorite sports teams or favorite athletes? <sighs> no. No? No. I agree. I, I, I was on a swimming team in high school uh, and I was fairly good at sports, but I'm really not a huge sports fan, although I have so many people now that in my life that are sports fans that I'm sort of inundated hearing about it all the time, so I sort of follow it. But, I mean, if you ask me the names of players or what this team, I mean, you could tell me the name of a team and I might not know if it's an, a baseball team or a football team or a basketball team. I'm, not that much of a sports fan, which is not good because a lot of people like to talk about sports, especially guys. So it's a subject <laughs> that I wish I was more interested in, just for social reasons. I think you know enough about sports that you can have a good conversation around well, sports. Well, I know there's such a thing as baseball, I've heard of it. I think football exists, you know, but it's a, I, I, have, a I have a smattering of knowledge about that. I think that. you can talk golf. I think we've done that. But I do know about Perio because <laughs> that's that's really what I do know about and that's it's great. And I love blood. doing it. Perio is like, hey, it's like, you know, put some instruments by hand, put me, put a patient in the chair, and it's like, okay, that's where I belong. That's just it. So if you're going to take a day and just binge watch something on TV, is it movies? Is it a series? No, I hate to say it, but I like TCM, Turner Classic Movies. And I just, I like the old movies. I appreciate them. I, I remember some of them, fortunately or unfortunately. And I like old movies, black and white movies, so it's pri I'm primarily movies, but a movie fan. Uh, I do watch some TV, although there really isn't very much that I can find that's good. Um, but I like to watch movies, and if it's a good movie, if it's not old, but it's new and it's good, it's great. I'm trying to think of my favorite movie of all time is called Being There. It's with Peter Sellers and Shirley MacLaine, Melvin Douglas, and I, I just love the movie. I can watch it over and over again, and I learn something new and appreciate something new every time I watch it. Another movie which you've probably heard of is Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. 
Groundhog Day for me is Groundhog Day. That's how many times I've seen it over and over and over. <laughs> and now we're living it, basically. We're basically living it. Uh, what about music? Nah. Nah, pass. You know, I listen to music, but it's not like I'm a music person. Um, any kind of music is okay. I'm not a hard rock guy at all. Um, but, you know, country music is okay. Um, I, I actually, when I go walking, I li listen to March music, John Philip Sousa, believe it or not. I also like, uh, I heard it through the grapevine uh, because there's a long version of that and I like the beat. But there's no particular kind of music that I would say, hey, I'm a fan of. Uh, I enjoy music and it just depends on what, what, what the music is at the time. Well, I know you've seen a lot of Broadway shows. Do you have a favorite? I think uh, Book of Mormon, Book of I Mormon. think. Book of Mormon, a little controversial, hysterical. It was enormously funny. There was also a movie that I, uh, a, a play I saw in New York, and, and I do enjoy the New York productions. I just think that, I really think they're the best. Um, there's a movie about a witch, and I can't remember the name. It also, it's a musical, and very, very. It was very popular. Very wicked. Wicked, great, with the original star. Um, and then there was a, you know, there was another play that that I think the actor won the Tony for best actor. This was more recently. It was about two or three years ago. Dear Evan um, Hansen. I'm sorry? Dear Evan Hansen. I think it's Dear Evan Hansen. How do you know? I love those shows too. I'm impressed. Evan Hansen was so Phenomenal. good. Phenomenal. So good. Did you see the original mm -hmm. cast of Hamilton? You know, I haven't seen Hamilton. You haven't seen Hamilton? I haven't seen Hamilton in the original cast. I haven't seen Hamilton in the unoriginal cast. I have not seen Hamilton. Sorry. Although I have Hamilton in my office periodically because Skyler, uh, who does my videos, has a great dog, French Bulldog, named Hamilton. So Hamilton comes to visit me period, and we're actually friends. You've always kind of been a dog person. Do you currently have a dog? We currently have a dog. Uh, it's really the dog of my... Uh, significant other and, and and his name is Jesse and he's a Labradoodle and great great dog S really smart and he's a gem so we love him very much what else what else would you tell us about you that people don't I want to come know? back as a French poodle in the home of a rich family in my next life so I think that I would that that could work for me very well. I think that's something <laughs> we could all aspire to. <laughs> what else? What can I tell you? I try to. St I try. I'm trying more and more to be in the moment. You know, and that's where meditation helps a lot because when I meditate, I realize that you know. Who is you know? I've discovered the enemy, and he is us. Because if we're you know, if we're unhappy about something, nobody's making us unhappy but us and our thoughts. And when you meditate, you can let your thoughts go. You realize those are only thoughts, they're only temporary. And it gives you a new, pers a, a different perspective on, 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 on what's important, what's not important, and how we create our own lives in so many ways. What advice would you give someone who's never done meditation, who wants to give it a try? There's a book by Herbert Benson, actually. Uh, I think it's called The Relaxation Response. And it's the very simplest form of meditation. I think he just says, just say the word one over and over and over again. One, 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 and just focus on that. I don't do that at this point. I just count my breath. So I count my breath to four. And I, want, I think of my breathing and I think one, you know, with each breath I count one, two, three, four, then I start over again. And what you do is you'll find that your mind drifts away. You'll be thinking about something else. 
and then you focus back on your breath and you realize, oh, I was thinking about this, I got caught up in that thought. And then you let that thought go be, and you focus back on your breath and all of a sudden that thought that was making you maybe upset or miserable, the thought's gone because now you're thinking about this. And then you realize that why were you unhappy? That thought made you unhappy, but it wasn't real, it was only a thought. What's real is your breathing. That's actually happening. The thought is nothing but an electrical impulse and it's really not real and yet we pick those thoughts up, make them real in a way for us instead of living in the moment we live in the future or we were living in the past often regretting the past or worrying about the future and it takes a lot of the spontaneity and sometimes the joy out of life. Oh, one other thing I'd like to mention I recently got this plaque from YouTube congratulating me for having over a hundred thousand YouTube viewers which was really very exciting. So, I mean, I never in a million years would have thought anyone would want to watch me on YouTube, but apparently there are some people who have questionable taste if they want to watch me. But I try to be informative and sometimes uh, uh, entertaining as well, and we have over 100,000 YouTube uh, viewers, subscribers, and it's growing so that's really been great and exciting and I love it because I can pass new information interesting things on to the public that they may not know about it's fun then there's a wealth of information on your YouTube channel it's amazing I've got a ton of YouTube videos <laughs> well this has been really fun thank you for spending some time with me we've enjoyed getting to know a little bit uh, you know more personal side of Dr. Nemeth um, if you, if you guys enjoyed the video, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Um, Dr. Nemeth puts out videos every week that are just seriously a wealth of information. So um, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe to the channel. Yeah, hey, we'd love to hear from you. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you didn't find out things about me that were too terribly disappointed. So it's all good. Restore your smile and your health Visit drnemeth.com to schedule your appointment today.